Vim is absolutely amazing. And you, I, I think honestly, everyone should at least try it once. And I think it's something I can't live without. If I only had to choose one or two programs on a computer, Vim would be one of them. It is just possibly the best editor I've ever had. But, and this is a big but, I hated Vim. I despised it. I looked at it and I was like, oh, that's just for elitist jerks. Vim, come on. And then I started to see some something in the whole reason why, why bother with Vim came from another YouTuber, and he does a lot of streaming called The Primogen. He's a coder. He, he did, I think he was a senior engineer for Netflix, and how he was moving around Vim was at a speed that I didn't think was humanly possible. Let me just show you a clip. It's insane. Then you're going to need to know W, B, E. Then don't forget F and T and capital F and, of course, capital T. Then you're going to need to know Y, Y, P, D, D, and, of course, shift P. Never sleep on the shift P. Quite useful. Sometimes you need the delete by character or insert mode delete by character or the entire line. Just very important things to know about. Sometimes you find yourself on squirrely braces in which you need to jump. Use that percent sign. And, of course, that pesky capitalized character. Hit it with a tilde. Sometimes you need to go to the back of the line. Sometimes you need to go to the front of the line. Sometimes you need to go to the very beginning or in certain mode needed at the beginning or end of the line. Very straightforward. So now you are ready. Yeah, I, I don't think I'll ever get to that level, and that's okay. I've already written that part out. I'm God, in, you know, gave me some gifts. That's probably not going to be one of them. Maybe in 10 years, but probably not. At that point, I'll probably be in my 50s and, <laughs> and that chip probably sailed. So I want to teach you the foundation, because if you go watch his videos, you're going to be like, damn, I am lost. I can't even follow this because you just don't understand the basics of Vim and what makes it awesome. <laughs> and that's what I want to teach you in this video. Let's just go over the basics, understanding how to kind of move around, uh, how, why it feels awesome. And I'm going to give you use cases that aren't for programming because as a sysadmin, when I started to learn VI, which is uh, basically a dumber version of Vim without like a bunch of plugins and stuff. And I used it on servers. When I started learning that, I was like, oh my gosh, this saves me so much time. Oh, I love it because I was constantly using like copy buffers and other things that um, I needed to do and using nano to basically edit documents. And that was just awful when you're in a remote terminal. So I want to teach you my methods of understanding it, give you a little cheat sheet, uh, kind of show you the door and the basics and, and establish that strong foundation. So even if you don't learn Vim, at least you can appreciate it. So let's do this. First off, I made this cheat sheet. I kind of put it on my background. Uh, just to kind of show you some of the basic hotkeys. This is a bit overwhelming and you're going to probably go, what is this? Uh, I'm going to take this off my background, obviously, uh, down the road. But for now, when I'm in terminal, I pull this up and I launch into Vim. I can still kind of see all my hotkeys and I'm like, oh, OK, I need to go to here. I need to pull this up. I can kind of see it in the background. So that's why I did it that way. Uh, but that's not going to be for everybody. I wanted to give that as a learning option. Uh, but first, I want to kind of teach you the basics of Vim, because when you launch into Vim, there's probably the age old meme. How in the hell do you edit exit Vim? And there's really only one way you really need to learn, and it's the fastest way. Shift ZZ saves and quits. That's it. You didn't have to hit colon, W, exclamation or any of that. Shift ZZ saves and quits. You might be thinking, well, let's say I, don't, I type a bunch of stuff, Titus, and I'm like, I don't want to save this file anymore. Oh, well. That's simple. You can just hit shift Z Q to don't save and quit. So that's quitting Vim. That's the very first lesson. The second lesson you need to learn is the modes. In the bottom left, uh, you need to understand normal mode, insert mode, and visual mode. Those are the big three, <laughs> really the only three, but normal mode is basically taking this, everything from the middle part of the screen and over. So when you go from the middle part of the screen, that normal normal mode movement in copy, paste, exit, tab, split windows, all that's done inside normal mode. And then over in insert mode, all these other things um, basically uh, are hotkeys to do that in that mode. And then visual mode 
is that. So let's kind of show you what that looks like. Let's jump to my website directory and let's pretend like I'm editing a file. Let's just come into Vim. Vim, the ultimate editor, we'll pull this up. So we have this markdown file I'm working on, uh, which you can actually see over here, which, yeah, we'll talk about this a little bit. But coming to the start of the file, you just type GG to go to there, hold and do capital G to go to the end of the file. This is all done in normal mode, but we were talking about those modes. How are we gonna do inserts? So let's say, okay, I'm arrowing around and I'm kind of getting there and you're, you're probably using your arrow keys right now and you're, you're just moving really slow and you're like, oh, is, how is this faster than VS Code? Gosh, Titus. I know because that's what I was saying. It's like, okay, I need to get to HTTPS down there. How do I do that? Well, you do forward slash HTTPS and you're there. Or let's say you need to go, you know, ah, I need to get to the in bracket of this line. You'd press F to go forward and then type in bracket and then your cursor would fly to the next in bracket. Or let's say you're up here on a word and you're like, okay, I need to go back to making. Uh, that's five words back. So I might go 5B. Or actually, uh, there's some dots in there. So actually, it'd be 3B from here or 2B. I can't count, but you get the idea. It goes to the beginning of the word just by pressing B. Or if you need to go to the end of the word, just pressing E goes to the end of the word. And if you need to go to the first start of the line, you can press zero or dollar sign to go to the end of the line. All these start to kind of become second nature and you'll even remap them and you can kind of see it in faint text here at the end again. Uh, it's hard to see some of the things I'm doing on the screen because of that background, but I just wanted to kind of show you a little bit of how I'm learning Vim and I'm doing pretty okay. Yeah, I would say I've really gotten to the point where I'm starting to pull ahead of editing files uh, in Vim than I was when I pulled up VS Code. So we've covered normal and insert mode. So we go I to insert text. We insert that text. Escape comes back to normal mode. Now, I didn't like this, and I'm going to press DD to delete the line, I to insert, move down, or let's say I delete that line, and instead of pressing I and then enter, let's delete this line, I could just do an uh, come up and press O, and it just adds a line and drops me down. Uh, escape to ex exit that insert mode. So that's normal mode, insert mode. Kind of a little bit of basics of getting around, so you understand normal mode, really for movement, insert mode to insert your text for visual mode. I would say you just hold V or you press V to go to visual. And then you'd say, you know what? I want to highlight everything in the top all the way to Vim cheat sheet. So we'll go 22, which is 22 lines up. That's the relative numbers you can kind of make out on the side. And then we'll do K that brings us up to that side. Y to yank, hold capital G to go to the end, press P, and then it tosses it all right here where the cursor was. Pretty darn awesome stuff. Obviously, we don't want to do that. We'll press U to undo it. So your hands really never leave the keyboard, but I did add a little function because as I was learning, I was like, ah, oh, I just need this thing. Can I just highlight that? I don't want to mess with the keyboard right now. And I, I was freaking out. So. I did a little hack on my VimRC, the configuration, which I'll put that in a little link so you can download it and make it your own. And basically it does the same thing, but you can use the mouse like you would in <laughs> Visual Studio. I know that's blasphemy for those veteran Vim users watching this, but something I just had to do just for the learning curve. Um, and if you get like your mouse cursor everywhere, just press ZZ lowercase this time, not save and quit and it'll center the screen. So that's what that does, escape to get out of visual mode, um, but kind of a cool way to interacting with all three of these modes. And then you have the cheat sheet in the background that you can kind of go through. And that's kind of how I do it. I do about a 90% opacity in Vim. Um, and that's why I can see that. Now, let's say you're good with all this and you're like, all right, Titus, uh, I feel like we've got uh, some of the basics. I know how to exit Vim. I understand the modes. Now you can actually take the tutorial. And the tutorial, you just, you know, after you install Vim on your system, you can do it Mac, Windows, Linux. Just type Vim tutorial. And this teaches you moving your cursor. The HJKL, all that right here. 
So if you're you're moving down and those types of things, I would say the biggest thing with this is the J and Kel K. I don't know if it's the gamer in me or what, but I feel like J should be up, but J is actually down and K is up, which it feels like that should be down. So I don't know why my brain keeps flipping those two letters, but that's probably one uh, mental barrier for a veteran computer user learning Vrem Vrem for the first time. I still mess those up all the time. I, I don't know why. We've already talked about exiting, editing, the deletion and insertion. Uh, very easy. Like X will just delete one character. Uh, delete mode, you can do all kinds of crazy things. Like if you want to delete till the end of the line, you can just delete that or delete till period. It'll delete that. Or if you want to just delete the whole line, DD deletes the whole line. I'm not going to go through all these because there's just so much. I want you to treat this like a video game though. Vim Tutor is not something you just do once and retain all the knowledge. I wish it worked like that. At least it didn't for me. Maybe if you're a genius and you're not as dumb as me, then you're, you're going to probably not have to do this as much. But I find once a week, just going through Vim tutorial, treating it like a game speed run. The first time you're going to struggle even to get through the whole thing. <laughs> but then on subsequent runs, you're going to be like, ah, oh, this is really starting to go a lot faster. And then just kind of time yourself and treat it like a speed run. And, and pretty soon you're going to be flipping through and go, okay, I'm starting to understand this. I'm starting to get a little bit better and just always do it. And then you're going to remember certain commands, like certain commands are like so useful to me in the server realm when I'm doing sysadmin work, that it's just impossible for me to forget them. Uh, so do the tutorial first, but I want to show you like a real world example where I might be on a command line and doing it. When I'm on servers, a lot of times I'm mounting drives through like F stab. And usually I'm not using Vim for this. Usually I'm using something called VI. It's, it's basically a basic version of Vim or Vim was extended VI is really how uh, it, it became. But VI was the originator. It was the very first. Uh, now, obviously, I made aliases to just launch Vim if I do VI uh, from muscle memory. But a lot of times I might do like a Vim etc f stab from a server and I'll pull in all my uh, uh, actual drives I'm going to be mounting when that server starts up. So let's go to the end of the line, like right here. And let's say I wanted to add all of my BLKID outputs because I need to grab a certain UUID. Now you could manually type that out and spend 10 minutes. You can do some kind of copy paste through like a remote terminal using SSH that that can work. Uh, maybe use Tmux and open up a different window. Again, that, that should only take maybe, a, you know, 30 seconds or something or you could just use Vim. So that that would be a better idea all around. So let's say we, we do that. Let's uh, hold colon. This puts it into like a command mode and we're gonna go R for retrieve space. And then we're gonna go exclamation and we're gonna go sudo BLK ID. Type my password. It's gonna retrieve 15 lines. This is every hard drive that's currently hooked up to the system. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. This gives me a good idea of what I need to grab. I need to grab a UUID from one of these ones. So I might look through and go, you know what? It was that XFS partition. So I need to grab this right here. So I could either highlight it with my mouse. If you want to go old school and press Y for yank. And then I just go, okay, cool. Let's put that up there. That's one way of doing it. Um, or I could just undo all that and say, you know what? Hmm. I just need the XFS partition. So I'll do colon, grab my last command, but this time I'm gonna grab uh, XFS. And just say, hey, what are my XFS partitions? Oh, okay, so we have these. Uh, well, one's Linux data, and then one's this one. Oh, that's my root label, so it's not that. Ah, this is the one I need. So let's delete, I just need the UUID. Let's delete till U. All right, cool, got that. Um, let's go forward to quotes. All right, forward to quote. Just do F quote, and that puts it there. And I don't really need any of this, so I can go delete to the end of the file. Boom. All right, cool. And then let's say we had a whole bunch of these. Let's just uh, yank this entire line, and we're just going to put a couple of them. Another really powerful thing about Vim, like in VS Code, you'd be like, you know what? This UUID is great and all. I've added 10 drives to the server, 
but there's a problem with the formatting. UUID doesn't use quotes. Now, normally you could go through each one and delete it, but this is Vim. We don't need to do any of that. So I made it a little hotkey, control shift. This puts us in our command mode. Uh, the first thing, percent says the whole file. S stands for substitute. Forward slash says, okay, what are we substituting? Well, we need the quotes. Is there any other quotes in this file? No, those are the only ones. Fstab doesn't use quotes. And then we just need to substitute it with either, well, right now it's a blank space, or just delete the file like that. And then forward slash, so we're substituting quotes with nothing. And then we're doing G for uh, the whole file at the end. So we hit enter, and then every quote in the file disappeared. Pretty, pretty powerful. I kind of wanted to go slow there just to kind of explain the substituting, um, which obviously we don't need to do that. We can remove these. There's other things that are in Vim, uh, certain add-ons just to kind of take you that last little bit, something to strive for. Like I have this right here is called Nerd Tree Plugin. Kind of gives you like icons and traditional folder structure. Works great. Hotkeys and stuff to learn in here, which frankly I haven't learned all of. I have fuzzy find editor to where I can just blankly type whatever it is I'm looking for. So if I was doing like ultimate guide uh, and it would pull up whatever it was right now, it's just grabbing my whole system because I'm in the, my root. Uh, but if I was like, let's say I jump over to website and I type Vim and I'm like, okay, I need to edit my Vim ultimate guide editor. Boom. It would pull it all up into here and we're great. Or, I might go, hey, what about my undos? You know how you hit the undo button a bunch? Well, Vim has a really cool program. I think this is undo, whatever it is, uh, but it actually shows you your undo. So like if you were coming up to here and be like, oh, what is this doing? All right, we're just removing certain things, moving things around, explaining it. Shows you what time the undo was, the differential at the very bottom here. This is pretty darn awesome. And let's just go back to the original uh, as we started typing 39 minutes ago. This is called undo tree, which very, very cool. So F5 to get out of this. So those are some of the plugins. And I, I want to walk you through the last thing to kind of touch here when it comes to Vim is touching on the VimRC file. Uh, the VimRC file is, is pretty awesome and something that uh, you can do Pretty much anything. I mean, I we probably could run a whole system basically through Vim with the RC file and scripts, uh, but it can do auto formatting. It the sky's the limit. The problem with the RC file is it can get very involved, and it takes years to probably set up one that is incredibly efficient uh, to the point where you get to like the primogens level. Uh, for me, I've only been doing it for a couple weeks to about a month, so. My RC file is pretty basic, but I feel like the basic one is where you should start and understanding each line that you're doing. I'm going to just go up to my Vim and pull up VimRC from here and just move over into this. Uh, another thing before we go is there's also tabs. So you can do tabs like this and open up a bunch of files if you wanted to open up several ones and then say, oh, I need to go to tab one, tab two, tab three. Uh, but we don't need those tabs, so I'm going to close those. So these are the what I'm using for plugins. Plugins are kind of extending the functionality of Vim beyond what's currently possible with many other editors. Uh, light line is just lighting up the line. One dark is this certain theme. A lot of people, most programmers like like base 16 or something like that, has a little more contrast. Uh, FZF, these two things were the fuzzy find, which was this right here. That's kind of how I search things. So like when I pulled up my custom Vim, uh, this would pull it up. Oh man, that's old. I need to actually redo that file. Um, Goyo, that kind of does like this focused, like if you want to live inside Vim, which I do recommend when you're learning, is just a nice, hey, I'm going to write an article. I don't need to see all these relative line numbers. And I just kind of want all the stuff to disappear around me. And it makes for writing articles and things very nice because it just removes everything. It's a full screen mode that just strips out all the formatting. And then you can just ride along. And then when you're done, you just kind of pop back into Vim like this and everything's perfect. Um, undo tree, we kind of talked about. Nerd tree, that was this guy, uh, just this file. Uh, undo tree was this. 
uh, just the, all the edits we've done on this file. Tabulars, this auto formatting. Uh, Vim Markdown, I do a lot of stuff with Markdown files. So, you know, I like to have a Markdown thing. It's like a Markdown extension for VS Code. Whack of time, I, I covered that on how to be a better programmer in a prior video. Dev icons, uh, this kind of gives those icons in my uh, nerd tree. Same with the nerd tree. Git plugin kind of shows what's going on when uh, you're in nerd tree and you go into a certain Git directory. In better escape, instead of pressing escape, like you go into insert mode and then coming all the way over to escape to press escape. Uh, instead, when you go to insert mode, you can actually just press JJ and in, in insert mode back to back and it'll escape out to Vim. You do this as a hotkey, but I liked the plugin a little better because if I was in insert mode, I press J, 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 it, it doesn't escape out. But if I press JJ real quick, it does escape out. So I thought that was kind of cool. And then syntax, and these are just some basic editors. I'm not going to go through each one of these lines, uh, but I kind of wanted to show you some of the things I do as far as my settings. Again, I'll put a link to my GitHub that kind of shows all this and uh, the website article as well. Uh, mouse equals A. This was a noob-friendly one. That's this uh, highlighting and actually making the mouse functional in Vim. Uh, I know veteran users won't use that at all, practically ever. Uh, it's just... When you're learning, it's nice. Uh, clipboard unnamed plus. This is something that's neat. There's some dependencies to make this work properly. Most systems out of the box, this won't work. But basically, there's something called registers in Vim, and then there's copy paste in Vim. And when you copy and paste, typically it would just put it in a register. It wouldn't put it in the system clipboard. But instead, doing this clipboard equals unnamed plus, it will actually put it in the system clipboard instead of and also the register. And basically what that does is it makes it to where you could copy something here, go over to your browser like here, and then paste in whatever it was you're working on Vim or vice versa. So it shares that cl system clipboard uh, quite well. So I like that feature. These are relative line numbers. This is another thing. You see how these numbers are on the left-hand side, uh, kind of showing what each line is. Uh, that's kind of nice. Background, term colors, leader keys, probably one of the big things to explain. I always map it to space. So when you look at this leader F, so when I press space bar F, it launches into nerd tree and then doing it again, toggles it off as you see nerd tree toggle. Go yo control, that capital C means control and then backslash, that brings it like that. Undo tree is just a simple F5 and control F. I liked that because that was the shortcut key for VS code. So launching into files uh, and their exclamation just says launch into files at full screen. Normally it does a window and I'm like, well, if you're doing a fuzzy find, don't you want to just see all the results and use up all your screen real estate? Because you're not going to be doing anything. You're not going to leave your search window up. Uh, so I found just hey zero out everything give me what i need and then when i hit enter it would take me to that file uh persistent undo uh you need to make this directory in dot vim from your home folder undo directory this tracks vim uh, uh stuff so when you're in the undo right here let's say you exit this uh let me quit out and i vim my vim rc and i press f5 you can still see all my undo edits if i didn't make that directory and specify all this in my vimrc i wouldn't have this history so that's why this is kind of the where it is and why it's the way it is uh tab edit key bindings this is those tabs so i map this to leaders one through five so if i add five tabs just space t space t space t i got five tabs space two tab two space three so on and so forth uh, pretty cool. And then if we go, let, let's say we want to close them, space C, space C, space B. <laughs> you got it. So those are my key binds for tabs. It was just the thing that made the most sense to me. There's probably a better way of doing this. But again, as a noob, that's kind of what I thought uh, was the most intuitive. Markdown edits. This is my markdown kind of things I like. I'm still t tinkering with this. Let the Automatically indo from Vim Markdown is not great. Uh, I'm going to actually change that. And then the remaps when we're mapping things. One thing about map is just like a general map of that key. In uh, remap, that, that means 
that in normal mode, it would map that. So in map is normal mode map. And at the end here, you can see like this is just a capital S in normal mode. We'll just put all this into my little prompt down there. And then the left left at the end here, that means it's going to press the left key twice. Normally, I'd be sitting here, it would go left left, and then it's ready to insert those characters I need, which is great. CR, the, the bracket CRs, carriage return. I try to kind of keep all my plug-in shortcuts and other general shortcuts separated so I know, hey, if I'm having a problem with this, this is where it would be in my file. Try to uh, document this a little bit better. I'm gonna do a better job and kind of clean this up as I go along. And then there's like really cool little auto format tables kind of thing. Uh, this right here, like the S-align, as I type out those uh, tables in my markdown files, it kind of shows all the stuff, uh, all the different tables. So like when I did a Windows uh, key table in one of my markdown files, it auto formatted all that for me. So it made things a lot easier. So these are the automatic functions that can be written to automatically format stuff, which makes it even better than extensions and most other IDEs. The main issue is coming up with these functions. And most times it's a copy and paste from uh, someone else, but sometimes you can write your own if you're particularly gifted. Uh, and then at the end, transparent background. Uh, I like the transparent background because when I'm outside of Vim and I, I come in, usually uh, I like to see kind of my background so I know my, my shortcut keys. So that's Vim, uh, a very basic version, walking through some of my Vim RC. I mean, I could go on and on and on about this program, but go try it out. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.